Time now for the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network with your host, Kevin Arnold and Always Positive Jay. It's been a beautiful weekend, a beautiful day here in the city of Cleveland, Ohio, and I am so glad, even though I can't hear it when we start the show, I am so glad we have a new open for the show. And with that, welcome as the big voice man, Bob in Millersburg. Thank you so much for our new open. It is the voice land right here on the Big Play Network, sponsored by Vector Tentacle. They'll get the right person in the right job the first time. And of course, we are partnered with LPV Productions. I am one of your hosts, Kevin Arnold, alongside me as always, always positive Jay across the table and behind that proverbial glass. It is our producer extraordinaire audio or Peter Tellup. For those that don't know, he is our AI system. He is what Jarvis was to Iron Man. Audio is to the voice of the land. And today we are joined. We are so happy to be joined from that Jack and uh, the Sports Parlor podcast. Nick Padone is joining us on the show today. Going to talk a lot of Cleveland sports, but thank you so much for taking some time to come. Yeah, in. man. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. This will be stuff. fun. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, full show. Crazy. Yeah. So we'll get right into things. And our title kind of mentioned sweet, no sweep. Uh, I, I guess a play on the whole door of the Explorer mm-hmm. thing. But with your Cleveland Guardians, it's kind of been, you know, feast or famine with them. It's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. It has been... They've gone the last three series. They got swept by the Giants. Then you go ahead and sweep your division rival in the Chicago White Sox. Then you get swept by the Yankees. Oh, and their trash fans are throwing trash at you. Before we get into that part of it, because, you know, got some thoughts on that. I got to ask you guys, and I'll start with Jay. This team, yes, it's a long season. This just feels like any old, doesn't matter if the name change or not, it feels like any old April of baseball in Cleveland. It's the roller coaster ride that is or was the Cleveland Indians that is now the Cleveland Guardians, as usual. This is weird. It's like it it gets cold, they can't bat. It gets warm, they can hit. It's They're just real weird at this time of the year always. Well, and and, but don't they lost every single kind of way this week? They they, they had, I think they out hit the Yankees on on Friday night and still lose four to one. Then you're leading in the top of the night. Do you expect Manuel Classe to come in, shut it down? He doesn't. They win in the bottom of the ninth. And then today you get your doors blown off. So yep. kind of lost every single kind of way in the Bronx. Yeah, for sure. Super frustrating. It's always frustrating to me, too. It just seems like the Yankees are one of those teams that just have Cleveland's number. Like you said, Jay, you know, used to be the Indians, now the Guardians, new name, same thing. Um, and yeah, it's just how this team always starts. It's probably how this year is going to go where, you know, they'll overachieve a little bit and they'll have games where they'll score 10 runs and get us all to believe. And then, you know, the inverse is also true where there'll be days where you can't get a hit and your starting pitching is still super young and it looks super dumb at times. And I think that's just going to be kind of the way that it goes. Yeah, And with a young team too, just, just kind of getting things started, you know, you have Quan who was playing well on the road then comes home and, you know, the fans are expecting everything. I was at the home opener and, you know, every single time he came up, the fans were into it. That was kind of like the only time there was energy in the stadium that night, but they almost tried, they tried to start this mighty ducks, like quack, quack, like Quan, 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 <laughs> Quan. So it, it was, it was fun, but then you see a guy not able, yeah. to, able to hit, not able to come through and kind of a lot of pressure on him. He, you know, he's, being interviewed before they even have their home opener by different places and saying like, you know, Cleveland's all about you, man. Like, you know, you're the biggest thing right now after six games of baseball, (laughs) they put a lot of hype and like a lot of pressure on that kid real fast. They did. Yeah. So you're going to have that, you know, Owen Miller was playing well. Then he goes on the COVID list. Quantro goes on the COVID list. He pitched well yesterday though. Pitching staff has been pretty good. I think really the only Mm -hmm. disappointment of the main guys has been Savali. Wouldn't you say? I mean, not just today. It feels like he's given up. Those, you know, those two run jacks kind of every every start early on and it's getting his team behind. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, he summed it up right there. I just get is it me or do you guys get super annoyed when we lose to the Yankees? Like it's just it's like losing two games every time I lose to those guys. <laughs> like it just drives me nuts. And then I see what their fans did and I just I'm still annoyed by that. I mean, I was brought up to as, as a baseball fan. I was brought up to hate the Yankees, just like as a football fan. I was brought up to hate the Steelers, and I was I was brought up to hate that school up north. In basketball, I don't know if there's necessarily a hate. It would have been the Bulls if they would have continued after after Jordan, because it seemed like that would have been the that was kind of the biggest rivalry. I mean, we grew to hate the Warriors, but there really wasn't one there. 
But in baseball, I was taught to hate the Yankees. I mean, Peter, you're a big baseball fan too. So uh, that's kind of how it's always been. But yet when they, when we need it most, it seems like the Yankees have our number, like Padone said. It, it really does. The, the weird thing is, you know, like in the 90s, there were times when during the, it seemed like during the regular season, we just could not beat the Yankees. But then when we got in the postseason, we would knock them out. Yeah. Which was, which was like just – it was just so sweet, like you know, revenge, right? Mm. Um, but no, it's uh, I don't this team right now with this team. I was hoping uh, we were listening, Jake and I were listening to the game and heard Class A blow that save, and it's just and then with the the fan, you know, just the behavior of the fans, you know, before the game was even over, they were obviously saying something to to Quan. Oh, for sure, so, yeah. You know, that was uh, I don't know that that's just classless, you know, and. Uh, I mean, can we all agree that the Yankees are in our top three, like, hated, hated teams, oh, yeah. power oh, rankings oh, of all oh, yeah. sports? Def- oh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I actually can't stand it more than the Steelers, believe it or not. I, I hate the Yankees I, with a passion. It, it upsets me more when I see, like, people around Cleveland that are huge, big Yankees fans more than people that are Pittsburgh fans. Mm-hmm. Like, I have I have friends that are, are Pittsburgh Steelers fans because, you know, we're so close. It's we're not close. far yeah. from Pittsburgh. You know, a, a good friend of mine is a big Steelers fan. His dad, his dad lives in Pittsburgh. He, you know, spends half yeah. his time there and I get it. You know, my grandfather was from that area. He was like from that area of Ohio. That's, you know, you spit on and you hit Pittsburgh. And so he was a uh, Steelers fan and my grandmother was a huge oh. Browns fan. So that was fun when those two, when the Browns and Steelers would play, cause they'd wear like, you know, Steelers uh, sweatshirt or Brown sweatshirt, and they'd just be bickering it with each other. See, the, the thing with the Yankees, too, it's like I can't stand because they kind of were the ones that started the whole being able to spend all this money and buying mm-hmm. all the, But it makes it worse. I can't stand their fans. I've always couldn't stand their fans. New York people are, I was saying earlier on the radio, it's they're just so arrogant and they just think they're better than everybody. We're supposed to do everything they do. Like, Dude, I don't want to even. You couldn't pay me to go vacation in New York. I want nothing to do with your city. That's a good point. You pay like thousands and thousands of dollars to live in a closet that could (laughs) buy a $300,000 home in Ohio for. You you raise a family, you can't even have a backyard with like grass. You don't even know what grass (laughs) is there unless you go to a park that you can get mugged in. Like, get the hell out of here with your Yankee and New York love. That town sucks. You guys are just walking all over each other there. It's overcrowded. You're, it's cold. Oh, it's, yeah. You, your weather's worse than mine. <laughs> Miami's the new New York City. I mean, look at the subway <laughs> systems are flooding. There's like rivers in them now. Like, get the hell out of here. Yeah, new rats York. the size of like raccoons. I dude, I there's probably rats the size of me out there, dude. <laughs> so, is, so tell me how you really feel about New York. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't know. Like, I was so excited I could do this show because I love to rant on New York because they just think. Only thing I want from them is their pizza. That is it. That's it. Other than that, I want nothing to do with that town. You know, honestly, you know, I, I like the Chicago pizza. I just had deep dish for the first time ever uh, last week when you we said, went to the Marvel thing. Where'd you get it at? Uh, is it Giordani's? Giordani's? Giordano's? In Giordano's? Yeah. 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 Oh, it was good. That's so fantastic. Two pieces, and I was just like, oh, I can't move. <laughs> oh, my God. That's yeah. the best. Screw New York. Back to what I was saying. <laughs> Is, is New York like thin crust? Is that there? Yeah, yeah, real yeah, thin, yeah. real big. You, you gotta fold it, fold it yeah. to yeah. eat it. A lot of flop though, man. Yeah. That's tough because then you gotta like fold it in half, and it's like, am I eating a taco or am I eating a piece of pizza? What's it the, gets tough. Vincenzo's downtown. Yeah, Vincenzo. Awesome, yeah. awesome pizza. It's really good. No. I, I don't know. I mean, their fans are trash. I would. I know you said you wouldn't go there. I. I at least would like to take a trip to New York City it's, at some point. If, if for nothing else, like. You know the basic tourism thing, yeah. the the Statue of Liberty, or you know even the the Freedom Tower, the Freedom Tower, and, cool. and the memorial for you know nine eleven. I would that's something that I feel like every American should have a chance to you know go see, pay pay their respects to those that someone could take me in a helicopter and I'll fly around and see it that way. I don't want nothing. To see. I want to look <laughs> down on those people in a helicopter. Well, and go in the summer. Man- Manhattan's not bad. No. What? Yeah, sure. You, you want to stay out of the Bronx? I think. And I don't understand. I just, I just don't understand where the vitriol came from yesterday in that game. I don't, I, you know, Quan trying to make a play, bangs into the wall, and then you're, you're, you know, you're laughing at a guy. You're loving that a guy is getting hurt. That's, that's one of the softest, weakest, 
most chump things you can do as a fan is to root for someone to get hurt. Even our biggest rivals, I would never root for Ben Roethlisberger or a Steeler or someone on that team up north, anything like that, to ever get hurt. Because, you know, if you've played sports before or you've just watched them, you know that there are some excruciating injuries that these guys have to work their way back from. And especially if it's a college athlete or, you know, it's a guy that's just starting out in the major leagues. He just got his opportunity. You know, major injury that takes, a, you know, he's got to go through rehab, then he's got to come through the minors again. Who knows who's taking that spot again? Those, these spots aren't guaranteed. So now you're laughing. And I saw people, I think it was Big uh, Barstool Big Cat, you know, kind of posting the picture of Straw climbing the wall, which you got to give a bunch of kudos to, to Straw. For Who's Straw Lord, as I call him now? The Straw Guardians Lord. of Cleveland, <laughs> Straw Lord? Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love seeing that picture that you did. And, you know, yeah, he's climbing the wall because he's he's not going to take that crap. I kind of I like to see that from he my team. He did it the respectful way. He didn't yeah. go in there swinging. He got right up to the guy. Man to man, face to face. You got something to say? Say it to me right now, right to my face. I have no problem with what he did. I couldn't tell. And they that, crossed the line. I couldn't tell what that wall was made of because he just scaled that thing like it was. Nothing. Oh, dude, he's Spider part Spider Man, yeah. part Star Lord. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was fence with like yeah. the advertisements behind it. Okay. But yeah, the, when I first saw the picture, I'm like, wait, how the hell is he just like <laughs> I mean, on the fence? That is like an that. iconic picture. Yeah, it sure. is. Yeah, that's like that's like a legendary Cleveland picture, and it, you know like have we saw it happen in real time like we'll look back on that like that's super dope but i think that that i was hoping at least obviously before what happened today that that could have been a turning point i know oh, i thought season. we were gonna crush him. Yeah, yeah same i thought that was gonna be like a rallying thing like miles straw jumps on the fence like he's yelling at yankees fans like they're throwing stuff you know their team had to, like how about judge and Jan carlos stanton had to go and say like hey, yeah. i give them stop. props oh yeah, yeah. Same, I, same, I, same. yeah like if i'm gonna knock new york i gotta yeah. give them props and do right that was very commendable what those two yeah did. for sure because they could have just ran in you know like like what probably everybody else did so anywho i thought that was going to be kind of like a rallying point we could have blown them out today savali who will probably be a yankee at some point in his career let's be honest he'll probably turn things around he's an italian <laughs> kid he's from there he's gonna end up pitching there one day and uh yeah i thought he would do better but he didn't and so be it yeah you don't like to see you know especially the star rotation that's supposed to be so good you don't want to see any sort of issue and of course the Yankees, I think, came into at least yesterday, if not today, they were the best pitching staff in all of baseball coming into coming into the series. Their weak spot was actually Garrett Cole, who yeah. helped Garrett Cole find his rhythm. The Guardians, uh, and you know, I would like to see that be a rallying point too, Padone. Like I really would. Still could be. It's, it's just still one could game. Be. Yeah, like sometimes you see that it kind of manifests itself as the season goes along, especially with a long season like baseball. Yeah. I mean, to not see it today, I guess, a little bit more fight back from this team, you know, kind of a criticism of them. But again, you know, all that stuff went down yesterday. The Yankees took care of business at home. We'll see what the rest of this seven game road trip is. I mean, they got to go. They got to go from New York all the way across to play the Angels, Los Angeles, Angels of Anaheim, four games. And then who do they come back this way with? I can't even remember the other three game series is with, but it's a 10 game road trip here in April to kind of finish things out again. It's, it's roller coaster baseball. I feel like we're going to, we're going to say that all season long. I just don't want to see something like this weekend kind of hurt this yeah. young team that doesn't, you know, yeah. they don't know what they don't know. You don't want to be what that, you don't want that to become what they know and what but they feel. Even though they did lose, like those road trips are known for like, building bond, well, yeah. good yeah. bonds and having all that happen and then yeah. going on a road trip i think is going to help but i'm i can't wait for it to happen but i'm glad we cannot bet yet because i would have bet on the indians to win today but guardians. And again oh guardians yeah i'll get it <laughs> <laughs> quarter in the jar quarter in the jar but yeah um uh, if you're betting now on them i would totally say they're going to win the next series the way they've been playing they yeah. lose a series, they win a series. They lose a series, they win a series. And it's it's like 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 we said, it's sweep. And you know, get swept, then sweep, then get swept. You you can't play. You're you're not going to be a build a consistent type team, unfortunately. That way, like it's it's fun to sweep. That's totally fun, and you get the the gifts and all of the emojis out about the brooms, and you swept this team, you swept that team. That's that's all well and good, but you got to win series. You got to take two or three. You got to take three or four. Let those build up. That's how the good teams become great teams and the great teams end up being the best at the end of the year and go win a world series.
And that's why the Indian, the yeah, Guardians. Uh, <laughs> quarter. Yeah, well, you know, the Indians didn't <laughs> win one for 70 plus years. Now the Guardians are going to add to like 73 or 74. So we'll just have to see. We'll we'll try to dabble in Guardians baseball every couple weeks. It's tough, dude, because this yeah. is where like it's it's tough to talk about baseball. It's tough to care. You got the draft this week, so you know that's gonna absolutely dominate yep. the entire not just sports news cycle, yep. but the global world news cycle yeah. from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You got the USFL trying to go on and compete. You got the NBA playoffs going on, and like the luster and like the romanticizing of the beginning of baseball season is starting to dwindle. We're gonna yep. get into the dog days of you know mid-May by the time the draft hype goes down and everything. So it gets it does it gets tough to talk about it at this time of year. It's and, just hard to pay attention to baseball yeah. after, before the All Star break because. And without Teams cable. Just, they just go up and down from right yeah. now. Without actual cable for Valley Sports, you know. Yeah, that hurts too. For the app, so that, that, that hurts to kind I of I won't keep discuss track. how I watch the Indians or Guardians. We promise that we'll talk a little bit more baseball than most other mm -hmm. outlets like this will, but it's still going to be tough because there are more things. And, you know, you talk about the draft. We'll get into that a little bit later. That involves the NFL and college football mm -hmm. in a way. So that two worlds kind of coming together, the two biggest worlds coming together. So – we will uh, touch on that a little bit later. Coming up next, though, we are we have Nick Badone in studio for a reason. We're going to talk about BetJack's training camp app to kind of help you understand sports betting. BetJack is here to help, so we're going to talk about that. If you are watching tonight, remember, follow us at VTL underscore pod. Like our Facebook page at Voice of the Land. And follow, like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and Big Play all across social media platforms and even LPV Productions. This is The Voice of Land right here on the Big Play Network. Whether you're looking to hire new talent or start a new career, Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has helped thousands of job seekers advance in their career with reputable partners throughout Northeastern Ohio. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. With an above average hire in rate of one in four candidates, Vector works hard to connect the right person with the right opportunity the first time. Vector Technical hires for skilled manufacturing and light industrial work and is sure to have a career that you've been looking for. To learn more, visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com. Welcome back to The Voice of the Land, a part of the Big Play Sports Network. And we are joined tonight by Nick Padone, who is in studio with us for the entire show. But we have him here for a reason we want to get to it now off the top because i'm sure people are trying to enjoy their sunday night so they're probably tuning in tuning out so nick you guys at bed jack just launched a, a new app what is the exact app that people want to look for because jay had a problem actually finding it we had one name up on our screen from when you guys did it on the sports parlor and then jay couldn't find it so how how do people find it and is it across all uh phone platforms yeah it is it's across all phone platforms it's also online at you know dub the good old traditional www.bedjack.com <laughs> But the app is definitely a lot more sleek. It's on the App Store. It's on the Google Play Store. Just search BetJack Training at uh, BetJack Training Camp. The logo to it is the traditional like Jack J that you know the same as the casino downtown Thistle Down in North Randall. So yeah, it's a it's a super sleek app. It's exactly a sports book. It's completely free to sign up, free to get started, and um, yeah, free to do the whole thing. There's there's no money involved. There's no credit cards or anything like that. So super dope. And I, I know it, it did it launch after March Madness or was it launching during and you kind of got a got a chance to try it out. And uh, I know you recorded something yeah. at Nick Padone 12 on Twitter. You uh, recorded yourself at the Mac tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So exactly. I would I had it a little bit before I've had it for a long time. Now. Like truth <laughs> be told, I've, I've had this thing for a while and it's been in development for a while. So we've had like different test flights and obviously uh, that whole process in, in development. But yeah, so I was able to go to the Mid-American Championship game in Cleveland and bet on the app there. And we made a video for that for Bet Jack, as well as, you know, I was able to go down this past week to Cincinnati for their home opener. Reds versus Guardians, kind of the perfect opportunity. Bet Jack definitely want, you know, we want to own Ohio. Like we mm. want people to know that, you know, we're the only gaming company that's from Ohio, like originally started and still going in Ohio. So we want to make sure people know that like Cleveland, Columbus, Cincy, all those big markets kind of have, you know, their their home because just like us, like we all love Cleveland. 
so much. Like those people are exactly the same in Cincinnati. Like they saw that we were wearing guardian stuff and they were giving us a hard time. Like they're, <laughs> they're all about the reds, even though they're probably living in Kentucky and stuff and like Columbus, <laughs> same thing. So yeah, super cool, super fun. There's, there's a ton of uh, good stuff going on. And I would say like to anybody that's having a hard time finding it or a hard time getting started, go to bet Jack on Twitter. It's literally the pinned tweet up at the bet Jack social and that get that sends you to an actual landing page where it explains it in a little mm-hmm. bit more detail. It's written out and there's links to click that'll actually redirect you right on your phone to the app store, or the Google play store. So for someone that doesn't know, and you know, Jay even said like, I might even ask, but to explain this to me. Like I have no, no clue what I'm doing. Cause we, we really don't. We told you that the last time we had John, but yeah. what was kind of the, the purpose or what is the, what is the hope for, for this app kind of getting that out there to people before Ohio really becomes legal with sports? Betting? Yeah, definitely. So it is legal. The sports betting is legal in Ohio right now. Right now they're in the phase where they're waiting for rules and regulations to be written and distributed to be able to get licenses out to everybody, to us, to FanDuel, DraftKings, MGM, mm-hmm. whole whole nine. Everybody's in this kind of waiting pattern. So while we're waiting and while all the hype was out that like sports betting is legal, it is coming. We were like, well, what could we do to kind of take this to the next? step and it like the only answer was to do a free betting app and the reason why is because we don't want people to sign up if it is january 1 2023 and bet insane parlays every bowl game go super hard blow their entire bank account not win anything Mm -hmm. and then they're like Okay, I don't even know what I bet on. Sports betting sucks, and I'm never going to do it again. Right. Because that's not fun. That, that's not fun. It is so pretty suppo- much me and Kevin can learn how to bet from here till then. Dude, exactly. Yeah. So, that's, uh, all right, it's on now. <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of fun in this app. Yeah. Like, so, I could bet without losing money right now to learn, bitch. Because I, I mean, I'm in Ohio. I don't go, to, I don't travel. I don't, yeah, like go to bet. I've never been to a sports book in my life. So, yeah, this will be awesome to learn on. Yeah, so every day when you log in, every 24 hours it resets. And when you log in, it's on login, you get 100 free tokens is what it is. So you pretty much have $100 to bet on anything. And, I mean, they have, like, everything on here. I've had this, like. All right, how many tokens you got right now? That's classified. Oh, that's classified. <laughs> no, I got sixty nine. I got that's 16, why I didn't plug in. You know, I, I, mean? I got sixty nine hundred tokens right so now. So you're doing pretty good for fake money right now. I mean I, that, and I've had it for a while. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's been the days where it's been like, oh, the big chunk just came out of that. I'm oh, glad recently. That it's... <laughs> yeah, I mean recently, and that's the cool part too, right? Like it does work just like a sports book. So there is like. Can I plug in? Yeah, this? go ahead. Okay, cool. So I can plug in and actually show you guys on this. But it works just like a sports work where you could, like, actually go see your old bets. And, like, this is, like, embarrassing. But, I mean, I lost a three-pick parlay on 420. You can see I bet 420 tokens on it. Yeah. Um, then I bet the Nets straight up because I didn't think they were going to go down 0-2 to Boston. They did. Yeah. Then I bet guardians money line today that didn't hit and then i bet no run first inning which oh, is so you're my jinxing my in, guardians that's in here. sports and that didn't hit either <laughs> but yeah you could like roll through and see all of your old bets and then you could see the bets that you currently have going on and then this is kind of the home page what it looks like you got baseball hockey football how cool pretty much everything on there yeah so and i think it's i mean it is important to to know you know we are talking about sports betting or just betting in general you know the typical psa it yeah. can become addictive. It can become an issue for people, and people have gone through that. And there's plenty of helplines and help communities for that. But I think the what we what we're seeing is kind of an emphasis in the sports world, and why a lot of people are talking about whether we've done it or not. Why why it's coming into general sports podcast, sports radio, uh, on air conversation, and you're looking at actual lines to these games. Mm-hmm. It, is it's just it's just becoming a natural part of the lexicon in you know it's, it's, everything's changing right now like for how many years you had to go to vegas to bet on a game yeah. that was it that was the only place now yeah. there's states all over around us that you can bet on games and we're going to be one of them soon so yeah, yeah everything's going to change and how the sports cast media and everything is going to be changed you're going to see lines like live lines on the bottom of sports games and stuff or what you can bet on and stuff a lot of stuff's going to change dude it's incredible it's incredible and a couple things to to kevin's point um as far as responsible gaming goes i mean we're all about that same thing in the twitter bio instagram bio youtube bio all the bios 
1-800-GAMBLER. That's the number. If you feel yourself even starting to slip a little bit, you know, reach out to help. It is supposed to be for fun. It is supposed to be just another way to enjoy the game. You know, instead of just rooting for somebody to win, all right, now you're rooting for somebody to win by three or more, you know, mm. so it just adds a little bit more fun. And then, like, some of the stuff with the player props and stuff, too, is just a lot of fun to get involved in. It is. It's going to completely change how we watch and consp- consume sports content the same way that kind of fantasy football does in a way for a lot of people actually nick i had a question for you uh i know this because i work with you on the sports parlor but oh, can you kind of that in you like that you like that <laughs> so what i was going to ask is if you could kind of talk a little bit more about like the prop bets because i think a lot of people don't really understand like the prop bets because i i find that kind of fascinating just all the different little things that's that you what i was referring to like yeah. under the tickers it'll show like prop bets that you'll be able to like in games who's going to make the next basket and stuff like that correct dude yeah it's phenomenal so it's so tonight the suns and the pelicans tip at 9 30 so you could click on that and then they have like player specials so you could bet on literally almost anything chris paul points rebounds and assists will have over and under 38 and a half of all those combined stats you could get even as crazy to they have player to score first field goal of the game. So who scores the first basket? It's a yeah, little right. crapshoot. You don't know. You don't. Is know. there a bet where I could bet is someone trying to try to run on the court and get tackled? No. Oh, so, okay. so like, <laughs> I, I know those a lot of those exotic prop bets exist, you know, mm-hmm. especially for it's popular in the Super Bowl. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, is yeah, there yeah. going to be a streaker and stuff? Th- this app does have a lot of crazy stuff like that. It doesn't get as insane of some of the stuff, and mm-hmm. that's just because U.S. markets aren't gonna right. aren't gonna offer a lot of that stuff. But a lot of it is offshore, which offers crazy Snoop Dogg gonna smoke on stage and that kind of stuff. Right. But I think it it still adds an element that even without some of those more exotic kind of off the off the court off the field things, it still feels like it, it opens up to more people because there are people that. You know, if they're a sports fan, they're not necessarily a fan of any team. They, yeah. they they enjoy watching players. They enjoy kind of they're more just into statistics. And, you know, that kind of speaks to them a little bit with those over unders with Chris Paul and the com- combined points, assists, rebounds, those types of things. So it kind of gives an angle for every yeah. single type of sports fan out there. And there are so many ways to bet. Right. So we yeah. wanted to get this all in front of everyone right now. So they have the next couple months to digest and understand, like, one, do I like sports betting at all to begin with? And two, okay, I like sports betting, particularly on this sport. Particularly, I like betting the spread. Particularly, I like betting, you know, money line, over-unders, mm. parlays, all these new things that obviously as us as sports fans, we're a little bit more familiar with than just the casual fan. But for the ca- more casual audience, we wanted to make sure they have all of this in front of them because if not, like, it's like, bro, like, what, what am I doing? You know, you download this, you see a bunch of numbers and it's like, this is just completely overwhelming but yeah. once you you know kind of take the time mess around with it win 6900 tokens it's it's a good time see for me i can't i'm actually looking forward to it i got into fantasy football because you know i'm a browns fan and we suffered for so many years and didn't get to yeah. watch anything fun <laughs> and i wanted to enjoy football so that's what got me into fantasy football this is where like i don't mind putting like as we say pizza money on something yeah. like it'll make you can watch every game because everything so much more excitement when you watch it just even if you win 20 bucks cool that's awesome but you'll be invested in games that aren't just cleveland centric anymore and i think like what's cool about this app is you know you just mentioned fantasy football there are people that do fantasy football just for fun and it mm-hmm. and it makes the nfl games more exciting not just when you watch your team but then you watch that uh that sunday afternoon game sunday night monday night or you know if you if you got the red zone channel or or however you're watching football it makes it more fun because now you're rooting for more you're trying to look for more to happen yeah. in, in the league beyond your team here there's probably going to be people that may not especially in the beginning they're not going to want to put actual money down but they yeah. continue is this app going to continue even when like all the rules and regulations are out there for people almost to kind of play like an arcade type game or or is it going to go away and become like actually kind of require people to put money on it we're working through it we're yeah. working through yeah. it um not sure yet what that's gonna look like obviously just because that stuff isn't final but yeah we're definitely working through all that we yeah we would like to keep it up because that'd be a lot of fun but yeah still working through that kind of stuff yeah I, again we give people that just want to have some fun and you know they yeah. got you're getting 100 tokens every single day let let's see you know let's see what i can do and then if they get, get into it and kind of want to put you know 
even like $10, 20. Yep. Like, we're not talking about these people that put these exorbitant amount of money uh, <laughs> and just have this money to mattress blow. Mac. Mattress Mac. <laughs> mattress Mac. Yeah, yeah. mattress Mac. It, you know, it, this is like a, you know, a dollar here or five dollars there maybe a ten dollar bet there and because some of those bets can turn into a lot more money you can get a lot more for you know what we should do a little fun thing is like mm -hmm. maybe we should all compete with each other we'll start a day with so the, and like every day and we'll have like a certain time like all right this is where it ends and we'll see who made the most money yeah so here's something that's completely unique to bet jack and that's a really that's a really good um point so that lacks in the world of sports betting so what we did is we wanted to integrate some sort of social platform to it so i have obviously my own account and then jay you know has your account kevin has your account we could actually friend each other in the app there's a friend code that we could text each other and then everybody could become friends in this app and exactly what you just said we could monitor these bets kind of back and forth and who's doing what so in like this when you go to challenges you could see that like I'm in a couple different challenges, like bet leagues with people where you could kind of, you know, I won't, yeah. you know, yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could kind of like, uh, yeah, exactly do what you just said. Like you set a 50 token limit every day where, you know, we're all going to put 50 fake tokens into yeah. a certain sporting event every day. We could do it for the NBA playoffs. We could do it for the NFL. And then, yeah, set a set period of time. And at the end, that's that. And we also See, have whoever wins the most tokens is the yeah, winner. Is the winner. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome then, bragging like, rights. Statistics. So you got stats up here. So you kind of know a little bit what to do. And you could see like what sports you're good at, what sports you're not that great at. Um, that's always fun to look at just because mine are like always really bad. And then <laughs> activities is really fun too. So this is the part where you can actually share like with your friends. It's like a Facebook status. So you see, I got my one buddy on here did no run first inning, which is like one of my big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so then you could just share like what you're betting on with your friends. And then the more friends you have, like the more you could share this kind of stuff and the more people could see it. So kind of a super cool, like social aspect into that. And you can learn from that big time. Like if yeah. you're someone that's better at betting, than yeah. you are than me. Yeah, you're showing me I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I'm like, all right, now I'm seeing a pattern. Yeah, and everything. we could and comment on each other's yeah, stuff too. Like, awesome. dude, I'm never betting on that. Like, you, you know, you've lost five in a row. Why would I ever bet on that? For the that? record, I had no idea the social part of this existed. Dude, I yeah, totally yeah, just yeah. brought that up yeah, out of the blue. It's, it's super unique. I mean, no one's no one's doing that, you know, so it's super unique. We definitely want people to utilize it for that exact reason of, you know, it just takes it to the next level where you could have that fun with your friends for free. You know, you don't have to put that actual money behind it like things like March Madness pools and, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff that people do. So, yeah, it was it's a super unique feature to the app that I really like. And to the point of just having fun and doing it, and it's kind of like a community thing. When I was down in Cincinnati for their opening day, just being, you know, the kind of person I am, obviously we're filming a video down there and these people, you know, and the fan, like the fans in the stands and stuff, like see that we're doing a video. People have a zillion questions about it. We pretty much had like half the section mm. betting on the same exact prop bet that mm. we were, you know, there were guardians fans, there were reds fans. It was like the coolest thing. Cause everybody then was cheering for the same outcome live at the game that we were at. And it was just super cool. Cause I'm like sitting here with me, my buddy who's filming and then like 30 strangers, like all betting that there won't be a run in this first inning and like we have people actively like cheering every out is just like yeah there we <laughs> like, go dude everybody was like three more three more you know <laughs> like in between innings it was just super fun so that kind of stuff the community aspect of it just like takes it to a whole new level because it's a completely different way to watch sports and it's bizarre to see people how oh, we're definitely have to go to a, a guardians game this yeah. year as a group and do yeah. this that sounds like a lot of fun and it just makes you know again how big social media is like mm -hmm. social interaction through the these types of things through apps, through websites right now, you know, that's such a cool added element. Um, last question for you, Padone, on this. Yeah. When when do you say Ohio gets actually like, actually set with all these rules, yeah. regulations, and can, you know, we'll have places for people to go to do this? So can I, I officially put money on a game in Ohio? So I will say that there is no set date right now. So mm -hmm. I, like we know, like, I'm being dead serious. Get on it, DeWine. Uh, no, no, it's not him. It's not him. So I'm going to yell at him anyway. So he's done his part. So right before Christmas, Mike DeWine did his part, and I was super pumped to see that, right? All like, right. I... I put out a shirt that said legalized sports betting Ohio. I remember. And the O in, in sports was the state of Ohio. And I raised like a couple hundred dollars for local schools. I just like found teachers that had 
forget what the website was called, like donor choose or something. Mm. I was able to buy like vacuum cleaners and like English textbooks and all this kind of stuff. And that's where the tax money is going to go from actual legalized sports betting. hundred percent of that tax money goes back to the schools, which I think is super cool. Um, just as a public school kid myself in high school. Um, so that's super dope. So he did his part in December around Christmas. He signed that bad boy into, you know, a bill that's legal, whatever mm. we're done. Now it is just the waiting pattern of rules and stuff. So it's not Mike DeWine. I've chilled out on him a lot. <laughs> he, he did what I did not think he was going to do and held up to his end of the deal. So the good news is it will be no later than January 1st, 2023. Okay. So that, so like nightmare scenario which is a it is a very real scenario just being candid with you guys that it could be january 1 2023 but you never know you know they could they could have it before football season possibly i don't know and and i i if i was sense. betting on it no I, I probably even i probably wouldn't even bet on it because no. like nothing that they do surprises me so yeah it, it's just too too hard to say right now but i would say that probably like january 1 2023 would be like what i'm leaning towards just kind of the way that it seems to be going, which is tough, but you still get the NFL playoffs. You still get bowl games. You still get college championships. So there is a ton of stuff at the beginning of uh, 2023. That'll be fun to bet on. It's a bummer, but that there, that it won't be here for football season, but it's all the more better to like use training camp, get your feet into that world. Yeah. And then eventually we want to tie tangible things to bet Jack training camp. So if people, you know, participate in challenges, we've already done giveaways on social media at bet Jack where people you know tweet their bet slip whatever random thing that they're betting on and they get free gv art shirts and like swag and that kind of stuff so we want to keep doing that we want to keep tying tangible things to this free app just to get people you know get people to have that kind of fun for free before it actually starts and when you know possibly browns tickets or guardians yeah. suite for, for literally zero dollars that'd be uh, that'd be super fun i think mm -hmm. Can we emphasize it's for fun it's for, it's for entertainment yeah, it's, for, it's yeah. free. you're not gonna yeah it's the free. odds are totally against you of becoming a millionaire yes. and becoming a six like is a career yeah do it for fun bet what you can afford if you can't lose it don't bet that, it. yeah that's the biggest rule right and i've even like taken that philosophy with the tokens like like yeah. if i can't afford to lose these tokens like i'm not gonna bet it because then i'm gonna be like pissed at myself like oh i just i just blew four thousand tokens then, on something and now i can't bet on this game that i wanted to bet on you know so what's well, yeah. what tone res i will only bet it like if i bet 20 bucks and i lose 20 bucks i'm not gonna be mad bet what you won't be mad about losing yep yeah, yeah, there because there is no reason to be like you know losing losing sleep. Like there's you know. There, I mean, I've witnessed a family member lose everything because of sports gambling. Like everything, his wife, his family, his house, his car, it lost it all. Yeah, thank God he turned it back around. But yeah, just it can go. It's a right. very news, very slippery slope. And the good news too is we've come such a long way. Oh, yeah. We're like we're like the especially in Ohio they're they're taking the right precautions. They're taking the right efforts and candidly I think that's part of what's taking so damn long is they <laughs> want to make sure that everything is set in stone. So yeah. if there is somebody that is out there struggling, you know that they could go seek that help and the help actually works. So you know 1-800 gambler, you you can't plug right. it enough. Yeah, that's this was uh, a pretty much back alley bookie type deal so if he wasn't paying like that dude, my cousin might not have lived well let's let's thing. let's leave it right there let's not talk <laughs> hey. about in the back alley we're, we're like way past the time for this a break, the 90s so, so, yeah, it's, so it's all good um but yeah it is it is all for fun and the app yeah. is out there if you guys search bet jack training camp and it is a lot of fun it is just for fun you're betting credits and if anybody needs help do please bet responsibly and 1-800 gambler is there for anyone that needs help and for anything reach out when you need it now we are going to switch gears we're going to talk a little bit of uh nfl draft and calves did evan mobley get robbed probably but we will give our answers to that on the other side if you're looking for some voice of land gear though we got just the place for you during this commercial break are you struggling to hire the right talent or maybe even find the right career vector technical makes it easy since 1992, Vector has provided Ohio employers with a reliable process for hiring and have helped thousands of job seekers advance in their careers. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. We invest time to get to know each client and candidate personally. Vector places people in job opportunities that they are truly excited about. Interested in learning more? Visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com to see a full list of our current job opportunities 
and to find out what Vector Technical can offer you. Get your gear at voiceoftheland.com forward slash shop. Welcome back to the Voice of the Land. Kevin Arnold alongside Always Positive Jay. I swear we're working on getting you on like in the actual commercial <laughs> on the shirts. Peter, is he on shirts on the website? He's right not now? yet. We need oh. to. Yeah, we need we to do that. that. You want the sales to go up? Put my face on the shirt. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get some mugs. Yeah, we'll get we'll get mugs. We'll get because I gotta change out my shirt. Everyone now, wants too. this mug and their mug. Dude. There I'm you go. You. As much as we wow, look at that. As much they sell themselves. <laughs> <laughs> as much as uh, as much as we love uh, one of the OGs, Nick Paulus. You know, it's it's time to get time to get Jay on the gear. So uh, we'll we'll try to we'll work on that here soon. So we'll try to get that out there. And of course, audio is behind the the glass tonight, producing for us. And we are joined by Nick Budon. We were just talking about that Jack training camp, the free app that you can kind of. Get to know what sports betting is all about again for fun, uh, bet responsibly, and kind of just a, a cool way to interact. And I'm sure you know a lot of people are probably betting a lot of NBA playoffs games right now. And we were hoping yeah. that the Cavs would be in one of these opening rounds to get a little bit more experience, but they did not. So, Cavs are in their off season. We got word of the rookie of the year honors. We'll start there, Evan Mobley take second to Scotty Barnes of Toronto. Scotty Barnes, of course, playing a, a big role. And I, I know you, I saw you tweet this yesterday, you know, playing a big role for them down the stretch to make that run, to solidify yeah. themselves in that top six. But it just felt like, and it's going to come out as biased because we're doing a Cleveland based Cleveland sports based podcast right now and show, but you know, it, it just felt like Evan Mobley was talked about, not just here. He got recognition around the country and was yeah. the most consistent and you know, lost by what was it, like fifteen or sixteen votes, something like that was the was the gap. Did he get robbed, Jay? Yeah, I mean, congratulations, Scotty Barnes. But yeah. um, yeah, Mobley got robbed for sure. But that dude, like, look at our season; it completely one eighty from last year to this year, and he's yeah. one of the, probably the biggest thing about it. Like, the kid played unreal defensively, and I think those stats, I think, probably got overlooked in this thing. Yeah, that's my opinion too. Is just that without Evan Mobley, man, the Cavs were a tough. They were a tough watch. Like, and oh, I know yeah. at that same time was like Jared Allen was down, and we were doing a lot of Moses Brown, which was fun, but <laughs> it, it wasn't Evan Mobley, you know, for sure. But it, it's so tough because Scotty Barnes and Evan Mobley have pretty much almost identical same yeah. offensive and defensive output. It literally just is the fact that last year the Cavs were so poverty. You know, they were yeah. they were finally starting to show things at the end of the season, but really last season and you know prior years it's just been so tough. And Evan Mobley gets here and we finally have life. Like they're worth watching. They're in games. They're in two play-in games because they were the seventh seed, and that's what I thought would get him that edge over for rookie of the year. Just because he made Cleveland Cavs basketball relevant again. And when LeBron leaves your team, guys, like you're supposed to be left for dead. It is supposed to be Chernobyl in your basketball town <laughs> for a very long time. And like, I truly believe that Kobe Altman hit on the big picks where he was supposed to. Darius Garland is a star. Evan Mobley, although he was robbed, albeit slightly, yeah. to Scotty Barnes, I still think Evan Mobley could be an MVP of this league one day. Yeah, he has and his that, ceiling like, is unreal. Yeah, yeah, so that's the thing. Like, even though it stings this year that they, you know, lost the way that they did this year, the future is so, so bright. And it's so annoying to say in, in sports and in Cleveland, especially, just like there's always next year. But for this Cavs team, like next year truly is something to look forward to because you got your pick back. You could get rid Ricky Rubio back. All the key guys are under contract. You hope this summer DG signs his max deal, whatever mm -hmm. that might be, and gets his bag. But, yeah, I, I mean, there's, like, no reason to be negative, even about Mobley losing right. Rookie of the Year. Because, like, one day if he wins MVP and the Cavs are 3-4 seed in that MVP season, it's all going to be sweeter. I mean, I, I don't care what anyone says. Maybe a hot take. If the Cavs were healthy, I don't care. They could have beat anybody in the Eastern Conference, I believe. That team, when they were completely healthy, were just blowing people off. How many games in a row did they beat the spread? Yeah, like, yeah. They were I mean, unreal they were the defensively yeah, yeah. awesome. Like, yeah, they were wagging. And that's not even without Sexton. Like, if you would have had him all year, what a difference he would have been. Like, we needed that scoring in that playoff game big time when Garland goes down. I mean, I might disagree in terms of 
you know, they could be anybody when we kind of saw like once people I wouldn't say the took, odds, but, but I'm saying they just right. could have yeah. done it. Yeah. But like that's a that's a disagreement where the gap isn't that far. And even if it was that far, mm-hmm. I wouldn't, you know, it's not like I'm gonna need to yell across the table to you. Know, like, yeah. And that's not that's I'll put not it this, I wouldn't have bet on it, yeah, but I wouldn't have been surprised if the Cavs were to upset any of those teams. They had the potential to do it. It's yeah. so tough too that the injuries happened when they did. Yeah. Because yeah. then like and I see everyone too is giving JB Bickerstaff all this heat, and I think that's foolish like oh completely he, he deserves he deserves his fair share of blame for what happened in the play in tournament because some of those rotations were flawed oh. you, kevin love put him on a milk carton he was missing in action you know in that final game defensively he's a liability i get it but so is Lori marketing why was jetty not in there get people that are in there that could move their feet but that point is all mute because the fact of the matter is JB was without his horses down the stretch post all-star game and in the NBA as a quality playoff team, that's when coaches are supposed to get their playoff lineups down pat. That's when you find out I want these eight guys on a nightly basis in win or go home situations. And not only these eight guys, I want these five together. So he didn't have the time to figure that out at all. Oh yeah. And then we're going to throw Karis Levert, who's a volume shooter and a volume scorer into that mix and needs the basketball into his hands. And he gets hurt right when he gets hurt. Yeah. So, and he gets hurt. So like JB never had the time to figure that out. So I'm, you know, people are just obviously Twitter is not real life. And that, <laughs> and that, that, that makes me super happy because like whenever I log on there and like people are talking about the Cavs or like even myself, like I, t- you know, tweeted that the Cavs could use somebody like Scotty Barnes this offseason, a wing that could play and score a little bit and play a little bit of defense. That's exactly the missing piece of this offense. And then I read some of my replies, you Cavs need a new coach. And then I'm like, okay, I'm off Twitter for the rest yeah. of the yeah, day. I, I stopped reading the replies. We had a conversation about, you know, the toxicity of Twitter and like how it's a fake place last week. Got, you know, the language got to a point that usually this show doesn't get to, <laughs> but it's probably the language that most of us would use about how we feel about how that gets. But, I got a buddy that was called, he had toxic positivity i was like is, what because he just always like says nice things about the browns like yeah. your positivity is toxic oh, you have toxic positivity yeah, i'm right. like that's not even a thing dude yeah, like what are you talking about that's when you know it's it's not a real place yeah. but, but but what is real is the future of this this Cavs team and it is yeah. it truly is bright and evan mobley was a big spot of that it you know there was a couple games where he you know you felt like he was hitting the rookie wall and then he just he breaks through and he, it, he's that I don't want to compare it based on talent level and two sport trying to compare two sports is tough, but at least characteristic wise, him and Nick Chubb are yeah, kind of quiet. that, you know, that quiet guy that just it gets the job done and gets it done well. And if he, he's going to add more to his game, he's going to add more weight this off season. So, you know, that those pieces coming back and the, the people you already have in the fold and the people they'll try to keep like Darius Garland, you have the core here. Yep. I was going to ask you guys what this Cavs team is missing, but you hit it right on the uh, the nail on the yeah, head. Yeah, I think we all wing, agree on wing, that. Wing, 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 wing. Wing, wing, If you can get like – Jay a, want wingy. <laughs> if you can what? add to that like a, a nice Tommy backup. Boy. Like, what? Yeah, like you just got like one wing. Like is the other one like broken? Like <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if it would be on both uh, well, on you, the screen there. Well, you even backed up like so you have more room and then you just still hey, did like let's, the one. Let's just the move on wing. from my fake wing, okay? <laughs> But we need a real wing. While your wing might be fake, we need a real <laughs> yeah. wing, a, you know, a three and D type guy that's going to, you know, it's going to be able to keep the flow going. And when the flow gets out of rhythm offensively, you know, finding a way to get their own. We thought that could be Karis Levert, and it still can be. Yeah. But, you know, him getting injured right when they come back from the All-Star break, there was never any synergy, no no chemistry with this team. You just felt like the energy just drained slowly and slowly every single game this team went out there. So so could be Isaac Okoro, too. He dr- he drives good. me up a wall. Like yeah. if he could hit a if he could hit a corner three, who knows? You know, if he yeah. takes the jump the that limit. Garland kind of did, yeah, even yes. not even that big of a jump, just a jump. I mean, yeah. he, he will be awesome. Yeah. It, it takes he needs it, to now. Like, because if you don't have, if you got Lori, you're you're hoping that Lori Marketing is going to defend the best player on the other team. The, no, he's the, not. The, the player that's the hottest on the other team. That's not gonna happen. He's gonna get. He's gonna get that one or two stops, like the Kevin Love stop in the <laughs> end of the 2016 Finals. You're you're not getting that. Cause I mean, there's just a huge difference when you watch Laurie Marketing go out there and guard someone, and then you watch Mobley go out there and guard someone. Their feet are just so much different how they guard them. Like he just can't do it like he uh, Mobley does. And he, he's great. I love his shooting, dude. But 
yeah, he's not the greatest defender, but that's okay. You, you always know a guy doesn't have good feet defensively, and you usually see this from bigger guys like Markinen, yeah. but you, you see it from even some of the smaller wing players. When they put, like, the hand up, but, like, their feet really aren't – if you look down <laughs> on the screen, like the feet aren't moving, but, like, the hand's, like, up. Like, this is going to follow them, like, mirror the whole thing. Like, that's going to take them. <laughs> Let's be fair. It was totally – I mean, he had a guard, Trey Young. No one wants to guard him, not yeah, even guards, and, and you got a seven-footer out there running around – like I felt kind of bad for him. I was at the game. I'm yeah. like, poor Lordy. Yeah. Look, I couldn't guard that guy. No, this guy's seven feet. He looks so like gangly out there running around. It was just funny. Yeah, screw Trey Young, but that's only because he's so good. So he can knock down those shots from the logo. But you know, we'll see what this this off season does. Do you guys uh, think they'll make the pick, or you think would you like to see him trade for a veteran wing, like an established guy? Yeah. I mean, I'm willing. I'm willing to have those conversations if there's someone available and they can get the right deal. But you, Same. it's going to be difficult, and this is going to be Kobe Altman's task this off season. If you're not, if you're looking to add a veteran instead of using that pick, which will probably be like 14, 15 with the odds in the ping pong balls. If you're trying to get a veteran in here for that wing position, what's going to be tough is you can't break up too much of the core that you've already established and the chemistry they were yeah. able to establish this season. Yeah, I wouldn't want them to trade any of the players. I like all the players we got. But if I'm wondering, like, is there more value to that pick before the lottery right now? Because we our odds are so like high to get like a bad pick or a low pick, as you'd say. I mean, for sure. Yeah, I, mm. you would think, right, that like if they were to do that, it would probably be right after, you know, right before the lottery. Just mm. say like, screw it and trade it for, you know, somebody, somebody that I think that the Cavs, the Cavs and Cavs fans should be keeping their eye on is just the situation with disgruntled players. Mm -hmm. Because now, like the Cavs are within a punching distance of actually capitalizing on that, yep. not being an enticing place for the, any of these guys to come in free agency if they were to be released but just in the sense of okay like i could see myself having basketball success in yeah. cleveland type of thing so somebody like donovan mitchell i think could be a lot yeah. of fun he's short he's only six one which like when you watch donovan mitchell play i don't think this guy's six one regardless i think we could use that kind of scoring Maybe we have our own Donovan Mitchell at home and Colin Sexton. The other thing is Zion. I know he probably wastes three three oh five right now, <laughs> but but I mean he's like the jig is up in in New Orleans. I mean they made the playoffs without him. That's Ingram's team now, and like they they could look to move him. David Griffin, Kobe Altman worked under him, so make that happen. Get Zion in Cleveland. Yeah, we'll we'll have to see what what they do this off season, but you already know that even if, you know, it, it's going to have to be through trade more so than free agency. Yeah. Like Nick just said, but you know, that Dan's willing to pay the money if they go over a little bit and they get into that luxury tax. If the team has a chance to win, Kobe Altman will be given all of the assets he has to his disposal and no money will not be a, a question like it is for, you know, well, for what I'd like to hear. Time, so liked hearing recently is you got, Alan, he read up a huge deal, so he yeah. likes staying here. You heard Chris LeVert saying he was only here for the littlest bit of time, but he's like, I love it here. I'd love to sign an extension. Yeah. This is a great place to play. Colin Sexton saying he wants to play here. Like, normally when we get free agents, they're just gone. They don't say anything <laughs> nice about it. We're like, oh, it's nice knowing you. We'll see you. We're going to have success somewhere else. It seems like that's kind of the trend right now in Cleveland. I hope to see it kind of stick around for a little bit with the cores that both, you know, baseball, basketball, and even our, our football team have. And speaking of football, we do need to – talk draft it feels weird pushing that to the end to yeah. preview this at the end of a show to leave that as the end but you know that's don't what happens when you don't have a first round pick <laughs> you don't have a first round pick it's tough to it's tough to really break down unless you've got all those draft boards number 44 so after the break we will see what we expect from the browns coming up this weekend how excited are we for the nfl draft how excited are you and be sure to keep reaching out at vtl underscore pod at kevin and seven at always positive j and at nick padone 12 we'll be right back after this short break right here on The Voice of Land. Are you looking for a career in manufacturing? Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has partnered with some of the biggest and the best companies throughout Northeastern Ohio. The recruiters at Vector Technical will coach you through the entire job process and will help you land an opportunity that you are truly excited about. Vector does not add any additional fees and offers benefits as well as free online skills training through Penn Foster. To learn more, visit www.vectortechnicalinc.com and make sure to check out our job board to see a full list of our current opportunities and apply.
Welcome back one final time on this Sunday evening, April 24th, to The Voice of Land right here on the Big Play Network. Kevin Arnold, Always Positive J, Audio, our producer extraordinaire, and we are so graciously joined by Nick Padone of Bet Jack and right here on the Big Play Network. You can see him Monday nights live, 9 p.m. on the Big Play Reflog Show alongside Big Play Dave and Chris McNeil, uh, Reflog on Twitter. So be sure to catch them at those times as well. We enjoy being a part and we are so honored to be a part of such a great family with the big play network so many great shows so many great people a part of that and i know coming up with the draft the dogs table also with big play network show they're gonna be live at the brick house on friday night for night uh night two at 7 p.m so i'll join. be jumping on with them at one point i'm sure you probably will if, maybe if i'm not working my other job i don't i don't know i probably won't because i mean you know the spot like i'm in at that place right now so you know i gonna earn my keep that's what i gotta that's what we're trying to do and i will always do that i will always earn my way through this industry and we will earn our way to being followed and liked by more people out there here on the voice of land because you know we might get sponsorships if we get more followers so we just make need sure to get have nick on more we'll get more viewers yeah probably <laughs> probably is that the key it I is guess the so. key yeah the key yeah. to everything so just more nick <laughs> i've been told that we need yeah. more nick <laughs> <laughs> i've heard that it's on two too so we need we need more Need more Nick on the show, but <laughs> it's the Padone power. Usually, what would get us viewers though would be talking football right off yeah. the right off the rip. And again, it's kind of weird that we're talking NFL draft. And again, join those guys at 7 p.m. at the Brick House uh, on the Dogs Table. They'll be breaking down the second round because they don't have a first round pick to break down. The Browns use that that they the, know that they know of at least. Now the Browns have shut down to the media. I've heard they have shut down the cross-country mortgage facility out in Berea to the media on Thursday night. So that leads you to expect that they're not going to do anything, but it, this team has shown that you can't, there's nothing that you can't expect with, with them, except that they're going to do their due diligence and they're going to make football well, decisions informed by analytics. So Andrew Barry never says anything in press conferences. And this last one, he actually dropped that nugget where he said something where along the lines, if a player of their value happens to fall, they don't mind doing something creative to move up and pretty much. Yeah, you know? yeah that's interesting, right? Because he I, don't ever say anything. I caught that. Especially the word creative and the way that he used it. That mm -hmm. he, yeah. I mean, he understands and like, it's not that he spoke out of turn there. Like, let's be real. They're going to have to get creative because they don't have a first round pick this year, next year, or the year after. So I, I fully expect him to be in full creative mode. And I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be floored if they draft at 44. I truly will be because I think we saw how this front office approaches things last season. And with so many good wide receivers, defensive ends, which is, you know, the biggest needs for the Browns right now, they're going to be within striking distance to get up to, you know, pick 40 with the Seahawks, 41 with the Seahawks as well. And then like, that costs nothing like to hop right. three spots to go get your guy that you actually want. So I think there are, there is going to be small creative ways. And then the big question that's still sitting out there is Baker Mayfield is still on this roster as it sits right now. Mm -hmm. I know Mike Tannenbaum who, you know, <laughs> thinks he's plugged in the NFL because he had a GM job for like 30 seconds. That he was like, terrible at. Dude, yeah, exactly. That. Like he's saying that the Browns are going to have to part with 44 overall to move Baker Mayfield. That's just not true. Like I, I truly think that they're going to try to move up even a little bit as much as they can to get a player that they like. And if none of those guys are there and they don't they don't feel comfortable with that, perfect opportunity to move back and recoup some of the stuff that you lost with Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I, Jay, I mean – how excited are you for this this draft? I mean, I'm normally really, about? really excited. Can you I, even quantify it? On a one to ten, I guess I'd say like a three. Really? I, I I'm normally, different though. Oh yeah, I'm normally super excited, but it's I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be dead honest. The whole watch things got me really bummed out about the Browns right now still, and. Yeah, I just couldn't get ex I like I just kind of been ignoring football to be honest with you guys. I'm like, all right, I'm not getting into this right now, but. I mean, I'm I, of, I love watching the draft itself still. I do get excited because yeah. there's like, what other show do you get to watch people like, congratulations, you won your dream job and this yeah. is where you're going and yeah. you've yeah. won your dream job. It's, it's, it's really cool experience. I love watching the excitement of those kids. Like, even if we didn't have a team, I would still watch yeah, the draft same. for that reason. I, I do like it that way. But man, it hurts not having that first rounder. I was, it does. I was, 
I was really looking forward to one of those Ohio State receivers too. That hurt. Yeah, I mean, my excitement level is probably where is probably similar to yours for the same reason because this whole Watson thing just still has me conflicted. And again, Twitter's not real. It's okay that you know to feel that way. And if people are excited about it, that's it's okay to feel that way too. Like I'm not here. We're never going to tell anybody how to feel about this circumstance. It's just it's so unique. It's so different. And there's there's a lot to it. I just still don't feel very comfortable and I haven't gotten into much football or, you know, listened to much of the stuff. I tried to listen to Andrew Barry before, but I knew it's going to be, you know, saying a lot to say a little that we've got like three of the best GMs in all of sports history doing that in, in press conferences. But my excitement level is low too, because not having that first round pick, it's the, it's the prestige as a fan for your team, that first round pick, like which of the top talents have been talked about forever. And you've heard during college mm-hmm. football season, now you're hearing about them in this pre-draft process and you're watching Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, uh, you know, uh, all Dane Brugler, all these guys talk about the same names over and over and over again, possibly being those game changers in the first round. You know, we don't have that. So I don't have that excitement to look forward to. I mean, I didn't read a single mock draft after we lost our no. first pick. And I probably read like 10 of those a day normally. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially, like, you know, oh. especially like the last week, you know, you got like all the, the you know, NFL Network, ESPN, they have their mock drafts like live. They're mm-hmm. almost running it like a first round. Like we mm-hmm. don't have anything in there, but there's also like seven or eight other teams that don't have yeah. a first round Historic. Pick. So it's, it, you know, like the excitement level just feels down. What I'm still excited for as a fan of just the NFL or the, the that draft, the way that they do it and the, the best doing it is kind of what you were just saying, Jay, in terms of like the excitement. Like you get to see someone, you know, get that call about that you got the job after your interview, like you got the job. Most of us, when we get our jobs, like no one sees it. There's nothing, but you see like the 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 relief, the the emotion from these players, yeah. especially on day three, when yeah. a lot of people aren't watching these, these picks don't seem to matter that much. You get these videos from the inside the houses. Of yeah. These, like these kids just. Those are by far the better. When they're at home, the reactions are far better. Than Dude, I don't know. This, this draft is going to be crazy. We finally got. I think this is the one that got canceled because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. this we is fun- a Vegas one. So it might be Dude, wild. We got the Bellagio one. So oh. like they're literally going to boat the prospects to the stage in the Bellagio. Oh, that's oh, pretty man. cool. How long is that going to take? Is there going to be prop bets on that? That's like, what I'm saying. <laughs> there, <laughs> there, prop bet there, is, there is draft prop bets. So that's another. I'm going to be betting on every pick. And I'm gonna be, I mean, for free. let's be real. The second I hear that, I'm like, all right, I'm out. So let's go. It's draft night. And we should be excited because yeah. I mean, look at our second round picks. You get Nick Chubb, Delpit, JOK. Like, we've been nailing our second round picks. Like, you're gonna get a good player there. In the- yeah, Delpit was 44 overall. If, if there's anything to be optimistic mm-hmm. about, Delpit was 44. 44 is where you sit now. So that's kind of the bar. Yeah. Second and third round, you're still getting starters for your mm-hmm. team because the and with these positions that are so deep defensive line wide receiver, you know, there's still going to be good players there. What's the gap between the tier that you could have been at at, at 13 versus this gap. That's uh, you know, the talent that's going to be available once you turn things around to Friday for round number two, but speaking on Friday, cause that's going to be where the Browns may have to make their, Hey, if they don't trade up, let's just assume they're not trading up into the first round, bottom of the first round Thursday. Right. What do they need to come out of? Yeah, Nick, who do you with. like? I yeah. want to know who you like. Dude, so, so that's a good point. And I've really been internalizing this, right? Because I, you know, I don't want to say the same thing that everyone's saying. Like, you know, the needs are defensive line and wide receiver. So to me, when I take a look at, okay, what do we really need? Say what you will about Deshaun Watson and like the perception of that off the field. On the field, you invested three first round picks for that guy and $230 million fully guaranteed. You need this to work out defensively. You've spent your money. You've done your job defensively. If you're Andrew Barry, you got miles Garrett for four more years. And now you got Denzel Ward for five more years. There's your cornerstone. And pieces. I think we're going to end up signing. Um, Jadamian Clowney. Clowney. Yeah, right. We'll see. So like, right. All that is a work in progress. Defensive tackle. I don't think that's a position that they value highly. So to long, long answer to a short question, I think my biggest thing that needs to come out of this weekend mm. is a dynamite explosive playmaker that can do things with the totally football agree. in their hands. Amari Cooper is one of the great route runners of the game right now. He's a good route runner. He's good at getting open, but we know after he gets open, 
there's there's little room for explosion. Same thing with Jarvis Landry. I would love for Jarvis to come back. Yeah. I love the leader that Jarvis is. But on the football field, let's be real. It's a little Bill Belichick, Bernie Cars- Kozar, diminishing skills. His skills mm. are diminishing. Injuries are starting to mount. Once the injuries yeah. start, they don't stop. I, I know Gerard Terry said that a bunch of times. Every, every player said yep. that a bunch of times. Donovan Peoples-Jones showed you things last year, but he also showed you things of why he was a sixth-round pick. Yep. And Anthony Schwartz looks like a guy that's really fast in a straight line and is still learning how to wear football pads so that's Mm. a complete work in progress so to me right now you have one sure thing at wide receiver in amari cooper and if you could trade up even a little bit i'm not saying into the first round because i don't think that's i don't understand how that would be possible but i think if you could trade up into the early 40s or even late 30s you could get a guy like jahan dotson out of penn state you could get george pickens who's a guy that they really really like out of georgia Mm -hmm. plays with a lot of passion plays with a lot of energy and now okay you're maybe cooking a little bit better than you were with just amari cooper and deshaun watson by themselves yeah wide receiver is is kind of that position for me i know I, i you said it. You said it. A bunch of people have said wide receiver and defensive line so many times, but Padone just laid it out there perfectly. You have. You, it seems like this team keeps getting route runners that can run run routes well, but Yak isn't there, or that big yeah. play ability isn't there. If we're gonna look at this in just strictly football terms, and I think this might be the first time I'm actually doing this, Deshaun Watson, the quarterback. Yes, he is a better football player than Baker Mayfield was. That is just that's fact. just fact out there if you watch the tape. And with his arm, the type of receivers that you can put around him, if you're going to bet on him and invest in him, you're going to need to put playmakers around him. And the playmakers that it's maybe not to the uh, Jamar Chase talent level, but that type of skill set that you know you just throw it up and they're going to go get it. I keep calling back to the Kansas City game in the regular season when uh, Jamar Chase went off and, you know, the numbers for Joe Burrow looked great after that game. There were several throws that Jamar Chase caught that Burrow just strictly just threw it up in the air. And he knew that his wide receiver was going to come down with it. That is what you need on this team. A guy that can, you know, when going gets tough, go up there and make a play. Energy starts to fill through the stadium or through the team. And then you start to get yep. in on I mean, another role. You look back at all, like most of the great quarterbacks, there's always a receiver that came up with and that's yep. affiliated with yep. them, you know, like Peyton Manning had Marvin Harrison, then Reggie Wayne, Tom Brady had Wes Welker and then Julian Edelman. Yeah. You know, you need those guys. You want a guy that just come up with them. So they just develop chemistry year after year, after year, after year. And then Watson just- had D hop. So, so I cannot now, believe it. <laughs> so now, yeah. So now we got it. Like, yeah. Now, like the task is out there for the Browns because you've seen that Deshaun Watson can be a home run hitter, mm-hmm. and he does it, make receivers better. Yeah, too. he does. Like, we've got Deshaun Jackson for whatever the bones of what's left of Deshaun Jackson, like pleading for the Browns to sign him because of Deshaun Watson, because he knows that if I could get deep, if I could beat my man one on one, which is the about the only thing he can do now. Yeah, <laughs> right, like the football will come his way so i think that's the biggest thing for the browns right now is just find see and, yeah and i don't impossible. want the deshaun jacksons the will fullers the guys the older guys that get hurt and stuff i want him to draft Same. a guy a young, young guy, that, guy just yeah. come up yeah. with them because watson's here and watson's here for five years we know that you get a rookie receiver in the second round i get that you don't get that extra fifth year but you still have four years so that's a perfect brand new pairing of people to just bring together you know it would be i think that would be the smartest way to go about it they've overhauled everything you might as well keep it up and get more talent at wide receiver and this is where front offices organizations coaching staffs keep their keep their jobs is in a situation like this you don't have a first round pick yeah wide receiver is deep but the players that we're talking about were the ones that were being mocked to them when they had a first round pick now, if you end up getting stuck, and I know that they talk through every single scenario yep. out at Berea, and they're they're always well prepared. But if you do have to pick at 44, and that is the position you've been talking about, we've talked about 2020. It was we need offensive line. They went offensive line last year. It was uh, cornerback, linebacker. The first two picks they did that, and they traded up a little bit to get JOK. Somehow he slipped. If there's a guy like that, they've shown that they're going to go get him. But if they have to stay at 44. You have to have done all of your homework and oh. figure out who's that guy that, you know, can be as impactful, maybe a little less so, but as impactful for this team being that playmaker on the outside as a wide receiver, or if it's defensive line, either way, you got to go figure out who's that next tier. It can still have 
a starter level impact. You know who wants a guy to take off the top more than anyone on that team is Nick Chubb and Kareem yep. Hunt. Because yeah. they're no longer – with Watson and Amari Cooper, and you get a guy who can take There's off the top. Nine, ten they can't, yeah, they ain't loading that box no more, right. and he's just going to oh. eat all day long, dude. Yeah, and these are the conversations I would love to be having more of. You know, again, there's still the the off the field situation. It's alleged is still, and you know, got it. He's going to go through the legal process. It just again for some people, it's going to be a long time. It's going to be a long time. It's not happening. It's not happening now. So I mean, it it seems like the dude is going to play. I mean, he's going to be out there week one. Like there's going to be no suspension this year because it was agreed that none of the depositions and things like that will happen during football season. So OTAs are going on right now. It's football season, baby. So yeah, and and looking at 2023 for that kind of stuff, similar to sports betting could be. And football is always a (laughs) always a fun time, and you know if we can get the if sports betting gets going or even at least at the very least we got the bet jack training camp going so you know kind of help people understand and be a big thing for football season football season should be a big thing i know there's plenty of people like me that still feel uncomfortable with all that stuff and it's you know everything is gonna unfortunately take time if however you feel it's okay to feel that way don't let the fake universe of twitter tell you (laughs) that's how you should feel but feel free to let everybody else in twitter know how you feel if you want to just type it out and not uh emergency talk into a camera spaces. Emergency, <laughs> uh, uh, emergency, emergency spaces, spaces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, get on there get on there right now um so but that's going to wrap it up for this edition of voice of land first i want to thank nick padone for coming on nick let people know how they can kind of reach out to you just all your uh, all your plugs here at the end of the show yeah definitely I'm, I'm trying to be more responsive man especially now that this app is out like such a big burden for me you know personally so tweet at me all the time whatever at nick padone 12 that's probably the best way to go about it host the sports parlor every week with phil taylor former browns defensive tackle this week we're going to talk about his nfl draft story you know the day that he found he, he you know received his dream job so that's going to be a ton of fun just to hear phil's story and we do it a lot of other unique stuff on that show. I think we give people their first taste of sports betting and sports betting content on that show, which has been unique for me because just like everybody else, I'm kind of just learning that for the first time too. So yeah, super fun. I would just say, follow me at Nick Padone 12. That's where you can find everything. Absolutely. So thank you so much for coming in, coming in studio. I know it's a little different sitting over in this corner. Dude, of the studio my, yeah, my one yeah, over there. Your little like, setups over off to, off to my right. So, uh, um, you know, I know it was a little weird, but appreciate you coming in and, and being on. And uh, Jay, thank you so much. Always thank you so much for being here. And uh, to our producer extraordinaire, thank you so much. So for Always Positive Jay, Nick Padone, Audio, or Peter Tulp, I'm Kevin Arnold reminding all of you, don't let anyone ever tell you it's just a game. We truly love you all, 3,000. And as our late great friend of LPV Productions and Voice Land, Mike Allen always used to say, all gas, no breaks. We'll see you next time, next week, here on The Voice of Land.